Hi, I'm Mark Hardy. I'm the Master Coordinator here at the University of Manitoba. Hi, my name is Sheena Marie Dubois. I am a student at the University of Manitoba in my third year of my science degree. I'm from Wasoxian First Nation uh, near Toronto. So I'm a little ways from home, so it's uh, it's nice to have a Massa here as this group because I wouldn't be able to have an opportunity to like at least meet other people like this because I'm pretty of a shy guy myself when I first came here. And so it actually really helped me to come out of my shell with that group because everyone was so warming and uh, actually cared. So it's really nice to have that in a community like this. So. The building here is great um, because there, there are so many different uh, students, you know, that are in sciences, some are trying to get into medical school, some are in social work, um, art students, so, uh, nursing, whatever, and we all kind of mingle here in the building. The elders here offer uh, lots of cultural guidance here on campus, not all, uh, at all levels of uh, traditions as well, too, like uh, being from someone who's learning from the beginning from uh, the traditions to the people who are very traditional as well. They play on all levels, and so they're very good at helping people who are just wanting to get into ceremonies, or they're, helping, they're very good at helping people who are already into ceremonies find ceremonies that they want to participate in. The good things about the building are the fact that there's a kitchen here. So I mean, if you wanna if you wanna eat something, bring your lunch, cook something, there's a kitchen available. There's 24-hour access to the building. So if you're studying late night, you have an exam or a test, you can come to the building, as well as 24-hour access computer lab and printing station. I'm Diana Hooper, and I work for the Access and Aboriginal Focus programs. Uh, we offer uh, some supportive programs for for the students. The focus in our area, in our programs, are that we focus mostly on the students and on their needs. We offer academic support, um, an academic counsellor, we offer personal counselling, we offer financial counselling. You'll find that as a student in the Access and Aboriginal Focus programs, you're part of a larger community. We're situated in the Megazi Agamic building and we offer a home away from home for our students. The orientation course that we uh, offer in August uh, here at uh, the Migazi Agamic Building is a three credit hour course that is run in conjunction with the Native Studies Department. The orientation class uh, takes place in what we call our circle room and this is our ceremonial room which uh, we have uh, a number of ceremonies there and also students can smudge themselves in this room. We have the uh, medicines here that they can use for smudging purposes. I, I've checked all the universities around and I, from what I noticed is that uh, not only is the cost of the education fairly reasonable but also at the same time I find that the community here is very great and that they have a wonderful opportunity for Aboriginal population to grow. Some of the partnerships that we have here on campus can lead to a great uh, opportunity for networking. Um, for instance like um, for the powwow committee even if you were interested in doing something like that. There's a lot of people, elders, uh, people from different organizations here who are just willing to participate and um, it's just a great opportunity to learn uh, how it works all together and also just to meet people in general too. So, In my first year of university I came here with uh, very high expectations and very high hopes and um, you know there was a transition that had to be made from from high school or from you know mature diploma whatever it was uh, that that I had to make in order to come into the university setting because the lectures here um, the classes here uh, the, the workload is, is is a lot different than when you're in high school or when you're upgrading um, you know you set your own hours here you set your own hours for, for when you study if you study so self-discipline is very 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 important Hi, my name is Mylene Spence and I'm in my third year studying Native Studies at the U of M. PACT stands for Promoting Aboriginal Community Together and it's a group of people that get paired up with like first year students and they basically get like a mentor to help them out with like all the questions because it's kind of like scary coming in. PACT is so helpful to me. I got a mentor in my second year and uh, it was still very helpful to me. Um, she basically just became like really good friends with me and she would help me out with things like how many classes I should take, what bursaries I should go for, things like that. I'm very excited to be a mentor. I think it would be like a good way to give back to the community and help out someone who's new. My first impression in university is like it was so big and scary. I didn't really know anyone right away. and. 
it's just kind of like a blur. It's just like going wherever and just trying to find your classes and like don't really know who to ask anything and yeah, it's scary. Hi, my name is Carla Lowen and I am an academic advisor in University One. What I love the best about University One is that no matter whether you know exactly what you want to get into or just wanting to explore some areas, it's the best way to um, get your feet wet in university and really explore what you want to do. What I love about University One Health Centre is that we specialize in the first year experience, so we are here to help you every step of the way. It's a common misconception that University One is an extra year, but it's not. The great thing about University One is that everything that you take in your first year is uh, will be used towards your faculty. So whether you're taking the requirements to one program or just taking a, a sampling of different types of courses, that will all be used in your faculty once you are admitted. I'm Marley Entz and I'm a third year nursing instructor um, and particularly for the Skills Lab. Well, I think uh, at the University of Manitoba, we've got uh, a broad range of experience in nursing instruction, as well as um, you might have noted already that we've got some very good um, classroom um, sort of instruction areas. But particularly, I think we're proud of the simulation lab. Um, the simulation lab has been around for a couple of years, but it gives good opportunity for students to learn what it might be like to work with an individual and have that not only as a mannequin that we have here, which is sort of the, the normal lab kind of um, equipment, but also uh, something where you can hear the heartbeat, you can hear um, the breath sounds, um, a birthing doll, and so on. So it goes one step further in allowing students to experience something that is pretty close to being a patient. Um, so although we are happy and, and these, um, these other labs are very important too, it's probably one of the things that's, that's unique about um, what's available here at the University of Manitoba. I think if somebody's looking for a profession, nursing is definitely one to consider, um, particularly if one is looking to have something that is, um, you're able to use it in a wide variety of different settings. So if you look at somebody who might be a home care nurse, somebody who works in a clinic at a hospital, somebody who wants to become a nurse, nurse practitioner, sort of a little bit more independent. Um, I actually had a background in another healthcare field originally and uh, then worked overseas and uh, did a lot of nursing sort of duties at that time and thought, hey, this is neat. I uh, not only can do science and, and healthcare related things, but I really love the aspect of working with people. Um, and that's what got me into it. So the caring, the patient sort of uh, aspect is, is probably still one of the key things. Just have a look at the cool toys you get to play with, right? Can you explain what the toy is? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My name's Ian Cameron, okay, uh, I <clears throat> belong to the Department of Physics and Astronomy uh, in the Faculty of Science. Yeah. I mean, one of the, the things about in, uh, astronomy is that I think a lot of people are very naturally interested in, in, in astronomy, and so uh, if they're aware of the fact that they've got a course here available for them to take, uh, they probably would. I'm uh, Heather Matheson, I'm a graduate student in the Department of Physics and Astronomy. So for me, when I started university, I actually didn't know what I wanted to go into. So I started out taking a lot of different science courses in my first year. I did physics and computer science and astronomy. This is a clamshell dome, okay, basically protects the uh, telescope from, uh, from weather. Uh, the telescope operates at outside temperatures all the time, okay. Uh, so it's basically just there to protect. Uh, the telescope, it opens out, and then of course we get to have a look at the sky. You may be a little bit surprised to know that astronomers don't really look through telescopes all that often. They, what they do is they, they put some instrumentation on the telescope and take pictures. What got me really interested in pursuing astronomy as a career was the summer job opportunities in the physics department. So I worked with a physics professor on a summer project. I got to use data from a real telescope and see what researchers are really doing uh, in the 
astronomy fields. We actually have two first year level courses. One's targeted, if you like, more to a general art, arts, people with a general arts background. And another one's, if you like, they're a little bit more science oriented. So we try to, uh, to cater to both. Biggest thing that a, uh, a student can, uh, coming into first year engineering can expect is a challenge. I was looking at picking my courses for grade 11. I really uh, looked at what do, what do I want to do? Um, what am I good at? What do I need to take? What do I need to get into? So um, basically, in grade 11, I went, all right, math, science, chemistry. I need chemistry, physics, and math. To get into engineering, those is what I will take. To ensure a top-notch engineering education is available to all, the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Manitoba boasts the most successful Aboriginal access program in the country. One-third of all professional engineers who claim Aboriginal heritage in Canada are graduates of the University of Manitoba. Hi, my name is Michelle Carrier. I am in my second to third year of Biosystems Engineering, and I'm also in the Engineering Access Program, or like we say, NGAP. NGAP is an access program just for Aboriginal students who want to go into engineering. They offer free tutoring, which is awesome because some engineering isn't exactly an easy degree to go for. Once you get to know everybody, it's very welcoming. Like it, I can't really describe. It's almost like it's home, pretty much. Um, a lot of people like tend to just hang out there just to um, social. Well, it's not like mainly about socializing, but just getting a feel of what engineering is all about, and we all help each other. Um, like we give each other our notes to, our, and we also have tutoring happening in the lounge all the time so it's an awesome atmosphere to be in especially when you're really going from a booking engineering degree. Hi, I'm Joan Linklater. I'm the Associate Dean of the Marcel A. Desertel Faculty of Music here at the University of Manitoba. Here at the Faculty of Music, we have wonderful programs for all kinds of people. And um, students come in after grade 12, and some of them are ready and have enough experience before they come to the audition to, to get in right away, and some of them don't. So um, we, we know that, and we want to welcome everybody. So what we have is a prep studies uh, department, and that program uh, gives uh, students the um, skills and knowledge and theory and the playing background that is needed. A large part of our program is the music ed program. So in that program we have students who are preparing to be music teachers and one of the um, important things for us is that our future music educators have an awareness of Aboriginal music and a respect for Aboriginal music. Um, so, for example, last week we had a uh, special guest, Winston Watney, who is uh, an Aboriginal musician and educator. And he's developed a really wonderful package of uh, Aboriginal materials for people to take into their classrooms. And uh, so he came last week with our own professor, uh, Robert Lett, who works here in extended education. And uh, he presented these materials so that our, our educators can take those materials and use them in their classrooms. And then in the fall, um, Winston and Robert are presenting a full three credit hour course for educators, specifically about um, Aboriginal perspectives in music education. So I think that's really exciting. My name is Catherine Rochon. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Entomology. Entomology is the study of insects and other arthropods, such as ticks and spiders. One of the things that uh, we did in entomology, and we do, we go out with students and we do field trips, and where the students uh, get to actually enjoy and, and see some of that diversity. Uh, we look at different ways to trap insects, different ways to collect them, uh, look at different, uh, just different methods, different environments. Um, so in the, on that field trip, the students come out and they get to really play. When you, you know, entomology is great because you get to really, while you work, you're playing outside. The students get a lot of contact with the different methods and at the same time with the insect they collect, then they get a lot of hands-on identification opportunities, look at the different 
insects you find in different environments. Why are they there? What are they doing? Which ones are predators? Which ones are prey? A student should come study entomology because entomology is really, really cool. And they should come do it here at the University of Manitoba because the University of Manitoba has the only department of entomology in Canada. I'm Madison Estelle, I'm Métis, and I'm a student at the Asper School of Business. I'm a member of ABEP, and I'm in the co-op program at Asper. ABEP is a great program. It gives you lots of opportunities to network. Uh, you can get lots of scholarships through ABEP and jobs. And when I first came into business, I thought maybe I'd go into law, so it was like business degree perfect for law. And then after taking courses, I geared more towards accounting. And so now I'm finishing up my degree and I hope to become a CA. And ABEP has definitely helped me accomplish my goals. And through the scholarships that it's provided me, it's definitely like given me incentive to work harder and get better grades and become more motivated. If you're coming from out of town or if you're just, you don't have a lot of friends within Asper, it gives you a great opportunity to meet people. It gives you lots of opportunities to find jobs, to meet people within the community, networking. And it really puts you a step ahead of other students who might be just lost in the big university. It like gives you a smaller group that you can be in and identify with. My name is Alyssa Schwann and I'm a, an assistant professor uh, in the Faculty of Architecture in the Environmental Design Program. Hi, my name is Trent Workman. I'm a Master's in Landscape Architecture student. My name is Alison Burkett and I graduated from the Bachelor's of Environmental Design here at the University of Manitoba. I was initially drawn to architecture when I was very young. I decided to come to the University of Manitoba because it had such a great reputation. Uh, in your first year of environmental design, you go on a trip to Chicago and you check out the, the parks and the, the built uh, projects that have uh, already been uh, built and you uh, get a sense of kind of places other than Winnipeg. Uh, in our second year, we went on a two-week trip to Europe and so that was really exciting to travel with classmates but also uh, to see a different part of the world and to see how um, architecture and landscape architecture man itself, manifests itself in other places. Well, I'm from Mistra, Saskatchewan, um, so I moved here and didn't know anybody. Um, I had a scholarship for swimming, um, so I did that for my first couple of years and then I really wanted to study um, interior design, I thought, and so I took the environmental design program and it became my whole entire life. One of the professors took us to New Orleans and we took the train there which was a really great experience and um, we got kind of to see the effects of the flood and then for the rest of the semester we worked on a project um, based on our experience in New Orleans. Following my graduation I worked in London in the UK and also in Holland in the Netherlands and I just recently have returned back to Canada. Then you have this whole new family and community here. Um, you spend so much time together and you live together and you learn to love each other and it was just a great program. Hello, my name is Kimberly Hart and I am a proud member of the Fish River Cree Nation. I am also a Master of Social Work student at the University of Manitoba's Faculty of Social Work program. So the Faculty of Social Work has three program sites. The first one is the Northern Bachelor of Social Work program in Thompson, Manitoba. The second site is the Inner City Social Work program campus, and that's the Access program located on South Park Avenue in Winnipeg. And then there's also the Fort Gary campus that has the uh, Bachelor of Social Work program at the University of Manitoba's main campus. In terms of the Faculty of Social Work as a student, I felt very comfortable because it's a faculty that is very approachable and that they are supportive and can lead you and guide you with how to go through your applications, uh, what you need to know in order to get through the program successfully. When you receive your social work degree, you can take that degree and work anywhere in Canada outside of the province of Manitoba. The Faculty of Social Work also offers more than 100 field placement opportunities and so that not only is in Manitoba but it's throughout Canada as well, which also means that you have 
great opportunities to travel in addition to building your employment development skills. Well, I, I feel that the University of Manitoba campus has a lot to offer post-secondary students. Recognizing that it can be an intimidating campus because it is considered to be a small city. There are a lot of supports available for Aboriginal students. So I think that the University of Manitoba main campus is an excellent choice to really challenge oneself to be on this main campus, I think really uh, is something to add to the journey of being a student, a university student, and, and to really be able to connect and uh, with other students as well as uh, faculty and staff members is really something that would enhance someone's self-confidence, I believe, in the end. Moving into residence, uh, obviously a large number of students that live in residence at the University are from rural Manitoba. And many of our communities in, in rural Manitoba are well represented here. I think it's important to have a residence community for rural students because you're coming in and you don't know anybody. Residence is bigger than my town. <laughs> the residence community itself is bigger than my town, so have all these people just my age was pretty crazy. <laughs> When you live in residence, there's people all around you and there's networking and there's people from all over the world, all over the country. There's lots of different programs that are going on and lots of different people that you can meet. You find people with similar interests, you find people with different interests, you know, it's all there. You know, our residence community right now is, is comprised of, of four buildings, almost 1,300 students living on our campus right now. And so through the years as we've tried to maintain and upgrade these buildings, there, we are presented with some challenges there. And there is a desire on the part of the university to upgrade and, and redevelop our residence community to something that can be competitive nationally and internationally. Hi, I'm Tika Spence. Hi, I'm Eileen Spence. Hi, I'm Michelle Carrier. We are members of the ICE group. ICE is the Indigenous Circles Empowerment. It is a leadership group based in, at the University of Manitoba. It's for Aboriginal students who attend the University of Manitoba in order to foster their um, leadership skills and confidence, public speaking. The benefit, well, for sure, the speech craft that we did, that I needed to prepare myself for like speeches. I was not that good at it, but after that, I'm okay getting better. <laughs> ICE has given me so much confidence. It's kind of taught me what a leader is and it helps me like go for the goals that I would have never thought I could do before. When we went to the TRC office, it was just an overwhelming experience seeing the kind of work that they were doing and that they were really excited to actually meet us students for, since we're only doing our undergrads right now. And we didn't think that we were like that noticeable yet. Megazi Agamek is awesome because it's a great place to like hang out, study, go to like access the computers, and then all the staff here are great. Bev is awesome. They are all encouraging. All encouraging. Like without this building, I'm pretty sure I'd be like wandering, <laughs> wandering <laughs> halls of different buildings and like sitting at a bench not knowing what to do. <laughs> So I'd like to take a moment to wish you all the best and much success in your future academic endeavors, which I hope will be at the University of Manitoba.